Okay, so let us now move to uh, uh, a couple of uh, improvisations uh, over VAE. Uh, we will just see the first way. So, posterior collapse in a knife VAE. Consider what is happening in a VAE. So, there is an encoder network and there is the decoder network. Given an x, this would give you q phi of z given x, the parameters of q phi of z given x. And the decoder will take a z, which is a sample from that q phi of z given x. And, uh, Produces the parameters of p theta of x given z. Sorry, uh, this is this takes a sample of z as an input. Yeah, this is what a VAE is doing. Okay, now in a VAE, the second term in elbow, which is the KL term. which is the KL between Q phi of z given x and P theta of z. So, we remove the dependency on P theta. So, this is P z. So, this is minimized, right? In a VAE, the second term in elbow is minimized. Now, if we do that, what is going to happen is for all x, q phi of z given x is forcefully made to be equal to, made to be the same as pz, whatever the uh, distribution on the uh, latent priories okay this can be let's say for instance normal 0 1 okay so now for all x we are asking the encoder to be trained in such a way that no matter what x that it sees as an input q phi of z given x should be a normal distribution with 0 mean and unit variance right okay fine so what is the issue with this so if this happens so this is called the collapse of posterior because this is the latent posterior and this latent posterior is collapsing into one particular distribution for all x okay now if this happens think about it what will happen in this situation is the decoder will see difficult to differentiate between differentiate between the differentiate between two input samples say xi and xj so suppose i have two input samples xi and xj the decoder will have uh, it very difficult to be separating between xi and xj because both for xi and xj this is because this is because q phi of uh, z z given xi will be same as th that of q phi of z given xj for both of these samples the encoder will output the same distribution which is normal 0 1 because the uh, elbow the second term in the elbow is forcing q phi of z given x to be equal to normal distribution uh, no matter what the input x i is so which means that if you sample a point so let us say that I sample a point you know z 1 or z i from 
q v of uh, z given x i and I have uh, z j being sampled from uh, q v of z given x j. So, both of these samples are coming from the exact same distribution normal 0 1. So, which means that the decoder the decoder will have uh, difficult difficulty in separating out uh, x i and x j uh, since both the, both the posteriors are same for uh, x i and x j. So, this phenomenon is called the posterior collapse. Okay? Now, which means that uh, the reconstruction or uh, the first term which is the reconstruction term in the uh, VAE will suffer because of this particular formulation. So, what do we do is the question. Okay? Now, one way to reduce this is uh, to solution for this problem is as follows solution for posterior collapse. Collapse in VA is So, recall that the last function j theta of q phi in the VAE can be written as 1 you have the reconstruction term which is the first term and we have the second term which is the KL divergence between q phi of uh, z given x and p z. Right? So, this is the elbow in uh, with, with the assumptions that we have made. So, if you think about it, this can be looked into as the reconstruction term. So, this is the reconstruction term. So, why is this a reconstruction term? What is it doing? X is being taken as the input to the encoder and you are given, you are getting, an, uh, getting a Z of course after reparameterization and Z is going as an input to the decoder and decoder is uh, trying to reconstruct or get the data back from the z that has been given. So, that is why the name auto encoder. So, what is an auto encoder? It is encoding the input data point, right. So, input data point is being encoded or embedded onto a latent space and that is getting reconstructed in the decoder. So, that is why the name variational auto encoder. So, this is auto encoding. Auto is self encoding, right. So, it is encoding the self which is x at the output of the decoder. So, that is the reconstruction term. There is a second term right which is the KL term which can be viewed as a, a regularization term on Z. So, this is reconstruction term on the X space. So, this is a regularization on Z. So, what do you mean by regularization? In machine learning regularization is a concept where we restrict the distribution of either the parameters or the or the activations of neural networks uh, such that a certain behavior is imposed on it's a certain prior behavior is imposed on either the activation distribution or the parameter distribution. Now, what are we doing here is this is a naive autoencoder where we are simply asking the uh, the architecture or the uh, system to reconstruct the data. But here we are saying you not only the task is not only to reconstruct reconstruct the data back but also to ensure that the distribution of the latent space has to follow a particular uh, prior distribution that we are imposing. So, VAE can be looked into as an autoencoder with the regularization. So, that is why sometimes uh, people refer to these uh, VAE kind of models as regularized autoencoders because this is autoencoder plus a regularization on the latent space. Okay? So, this term can be looked into as regularization. So, whenever, so let me write that down. So, VAE can be viewed as an auto encoder with a regularized latent space. So, that therefore, this is also called a regularized autoencoder. Okay. It 
it's called the regularized auto encoder so now whenever uh, we talk of regularization uh, in machine learning uh, we also talk of what is called as a regularization constant okay which will control the amount of regularization uh, that will happen so uh, a typical regularized cost in machine learning looks like the following right looks like so we have some cost which we'll call as some l theta uh, there will be some cost plus some time some lambda times some term on the parameter space theta right this is how uh, a regularized cost will look like where this is the the regularization function this is the cost function and this is typically what is called as the regularization constant that will govern how much regularization is happening so if you impose if you make lambda to be very high then um, the model get will get over regularized okay uh, if you make lambda to be very very small then the model will simply overfit so this is the uh, the classic bias and variance uh, trade off problem so you have uh, uh, you have a trade off the lambda would trade, uh, will trade off between uh, the uh, overfitting and underfitting re re uh, regimes which are the uh, high bias low variance and uh, low uh, low bias high variance regions okay so i am assuming that uh, the uh, audience here are aware of uh, what regularized machine learning is and uh, uh, what is the bias variance trade off so if you look at the cost function of uh, vae in terms of uh, a regularized uh, auto encoding uh, uh, cost function then it's obvious that the regularization constant here is missing right so what can be done is we'll write that down so in a in a vae viewed as viewed as a regularized auto encoder the regularization constant is absent okay so what does that mean that means that there is no way that one can control between the overfitting and underfitting reg uh, regimes in other words the posterior collapse that we just talked of which is that all of the latent posteriors uh, getting close to one particular distribution there is no way that we can control that a simple tweak that can be done to avoid this by is by adding the regularization constant uh, to the cost so can be made to trade off between cost and regularization by adding a adding a regularization constant to the cost cost regularization constant to the regularization function right constant to elbow so this was a simple tweak that was done so which means that you have uh, j theta of q phi of let's call this as uh, j cap the new cap cost is simply equal to now the we have the reconstruction cost as it is but to the kl cost some constant beta is added beta times the kl between q phi of uh, z given x and pz okay so this particular formulation is what is called as a beta vae where uh, beta is a number between 0 and 1 so with beta equal to 1 we will get to the uh, naive vae regime so now what happens is one can control beta so beta is made to be a hyperparameter a design choice hyperparameter so now what happens is higher the beta 
this implies you know you have more weight to the KL which means uh, this may lead to least lead to posterior collapse okay so lower beta this will lead to this the reconstructions are better because the confusion between the um, posteriors of different uh, input axes are are lesser here so what happens uh, if i mean higher beta will lead to posterior collapse which is fine you know but what is the advantage with the posterior collapses that recall during generation uh, the decoder has seen samples from q phi of z given x and and, and construct uh, the x back now we don't know q phi of z given x for every, for any given uh, x right so what do we do is we will assume that uh, q phi of z given x is equal to p of z for all x only then the the uh, generation works because we are sampling from p z finally during generation and giving it to decoder so now even though it might lead to posterior collapse this will lead to better generation right and uh, lower beta but the reconstructions would be bad in this case okay uh, in, in the lower beta regime the reconstructions are better but the generations are generations will suffer because generation will suffer because q phi of uh, z given x is not made equal to pz by lowering the beta so that that is the trade off uh, that one we deal with with uh, different values of beta so depending upon what is important for the given uh, application is it the is it the embedding extraction or reconstruction or generation depending upon that one would choose or tweak beta to suit the particular need okay so this is uh, about uh, beta vae so typically in, uh, in 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 practice when vae is asked to be implemented one would always implement a beta vae with a beta term uh, and uh, tweak beta on a validation data to suit whatever the given application the needs of the given application uh, are okay so that is how uh, a beta vae works